the etiology, clinical presentation, diagnosis, and management of empatigo. Empatigo is the most common bacterial skin infection in children worldwide. The incidence of empatigo is higher in the summer months due to environmental factors such as increased humidity. Empatigo is typically found in conditions of overcrowding, poor hygiene, malnutrition, and where the skin barrier is defective, such as insect bites or scabies. Empatigo is contagious, it's superficial, and it's a purulent bacterial skin infection that is initially vesicular, then turns into a crusted eruption. It presents in different clinical presentations, such as bolus empatigo, non-bolus empatigo, and ecthyma. Empatigo is most commonly found in children ages 2 through 5 years, although older children and adults can also be infected. The lesions are often asymptomatic, sometimes pruritic, but rarely painful. Bolus empatigo consists of vesicles that enlarge to form flaccid bullae with clear yellow fluid. Bullae are fluid-filled lesions greater than half a centimeter in diameter. The bullae later become darker and more turbid. Usually fewer lesions when compared to non-bolus empatigo. The trunk is the most frequently affected area, and the causative agent is Staph aureus. The lesions typically occur on intact skin with bolus empatigo. And then in the right corner, there's a picture there of what a typical presentation would appear like. Non-bolus empatigo is the most common form. Though bullae are not present, the vesicles, which are fluid-filled lesions less than half a centimeter in diameter, may appear transiently early in the disease. Causative agents are Staph aureus, Streptococcus pyogenes, or a combo of the two. The lesions usually occur at sites of skin trauma. So the lesions will go from papules to vesicles with surrounding erythema, pustules that enlarge and break down, and then there are the crusts with the honey-colored crusts. These lesions are commonly found on the face and on the extremities. Ecthyma is an ulcerat ulcerative form of empatigo in which lesions extend all the way down deep into the dermis. The punched out ulcers covered, are covered with yellow crust surrounded by raised margins. The microbiology of empatigo. The principal pathogen is Staphylococcus aureus. Group A beta hemolytic Streptococcus pyogenes is, the, is also a causative agent, but most commonly it's Staph aureus. Occasionally other serogroups such as C and G of the beta, hemolo beta hemolytic strep can also cause it, um, or a mixture of the first two listed. Inoculation occurs via breaches in the skin that cause colonization of intact skin or inoculation via sites of skin trauma. Bolus empatigo is caused by strains of Staph aureus that produce exfoliative toxin A, which causes a loss of cell adhesion in the superficial epidermis. The epidermis splits apart just below the stratum granulosum. The diagnosis of empatigo is usually clinical. It usually presents as a yellow to golden crust. Cultures are not usually necessary unless MRSA is suspected and skin swabs, skin swabs may also be warranted when the diagnosis is in doubt or the patient fails to respond to appropriate empiric therapy. If left untreated, empatigo may lead to cellulitis. If the causative agent is one of the streptococcal strains, possible complications are post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, scarlet fever, guttate psoriasis, or rheumatic fever. For mild localized infection without bullae, mupirocin ointment is the treatment of choice. 
Topical therapy has fewer side effects and lower risk for contributing to antibiotic resistance. For patients with extensive lesions, bullae, or systemic symptoms, oral antibiotics should be used. Typically, it's a 7 to 10 day series of dicloxacin, augmentin, or cephalexin. It is also recommended that patients with empatigo wash at least daily with soap and water. Also, to check all family members considering that empatigo is highly contagious. Macrolides, fluoroquinolones, and penicillin are not recommended for the treatment of empatigo. No macrolides because of the increasing resistance among staph, strep pyogenes and staph aureus. No fluoroquinolones due to the MRSA resistance. And penicillin used to be, but is no longer, adequate treatment due to significant role of staph aureus. Here's a list of differential diagnoses to consider while looking at the diagnosis. Herpes simplex, varicella, dermatophytosis, candida, pemphis vulgaris, discoid dermatitis, Stevens-Johnson syndrome, bullous erythema, multiform, and dermatitis herpetiformis.